today, uh, really, really good work today. You know, we got a little bit of a third down emphasis today, which was great. Um, had a chance to work some third down pressures in our walkthrough pre-practice and a chance to, to do some seven on seven with some third down emphasis. So um, first time we've done that kind of against each other. So that was that was really good work, fun to watch. Does it help having Tyler on the offensive side and Cheeto on the defensive side, guys that you've been around as you you know get settled in mm -hmm. here with this team and this roster? Yeah, they're a huge asset to, to me personally. Um, they're a really huge asset to our locker room and the players here. They do have some familiarity with uh, how the how we want to do business and, and what we want our team to look like. Uh, on top of the fact that they're both still really fantastic football players you know that that's the first thing we always want uh, as many good players as we can find and those two fit the bill um, but then there's there's just a, an element of familiarity I love seeing both of them every day it gives me some comfort um, that part's nice uh, and then again they, they've got some uh, Tyler in particular because he's been in the system allows to allows him to have some wisdom and uh, be able to impart some advice on guys in terms of the system he's been in it for a long time so uh, it's it's a really valuable person to have in here for our receivers and for me um, and Cheeto is just everything you ever want uh, your football players to be about he's about it and uh, he's a huge addition for us on the defensive side he is situational mm -hmm. what what can he do what does he need to do to grow into uh, more of a three down guy yeah he's he's been playing quite a bit of it uh, throughout the camp uh, it's just throughout the spring that's just kind of what he's done he's working as a three down player um you know, part of playing being a three down player is, is being stout and physical against the run and which you're not going to find much out about that right now with no pads on. But uh, learning the techniques and playing in, a, in that in that manner that, that Denar wants those guys at the outside backer position to play. Um, but everything from from Arden has been fantastic this preseason part. And again, the it's very revealing when the pads come on, if that's something that uh, he's up to the task for. I think he is and um, he's going to get a chance to prove it. What did you see from him on film last year that, that maybe he needs to to change? No, I wouldn't say change. I just think he's going to get more opportunities this year. Um, that's part of it. And there's going to be a, a physical nature to playing on first, second down at the outside linebacker spot that, again, I think he's up to the task um, um, to do. There's, there's, you got to set the edge. It's, it's dirty and gritty in there, and, and you got to be able to do all that. Um, I think he's fully capable of that, uh, playing the position the way that we want to play it on our defense. And um, I like what I've seen so far. How much has Will kind of tightened up his mechanics, keeping the elbow up mm -hmm. and keeping his base balanced in his feet? That's one of the big things we've emphasized with Will uh, over this period here is, is the base, uh, how important that is to playing quarterback, um, being able to play on time, being able to get the ball out quickly. Um, he's always had a really natural quick release. That's always been one of his strengths. And, um, you know, but that's the, the base and playing with the base and playing on time uh, within the framework of your mechanics are, are things that we spend a lot of time talking about. And uh, I think he's done a really nice job of translating those things on the field. And um, again, he's always had a quick release. So that part's easy. You don't have to do much coaching there. That's a natural thing that he does. Holding the elbow up higher, it seems like the time last year, it seemed like he maybe maybe it was the rush or maybe what they even have a tendency to yeah, drop. Yeah, we, don't, we don't spend a ton of time. Um, with, with upper body uh, mechanics as much, but there is some awareness of the general principle of you want your elbow above your shoulder for the most part. Um, whenever you start to drop it, you do lose control of the ball. You, the accuracy starts to um, dip a little bit, um, but he's he's been conscious of that and I think- Benefit him, like why, why do this change for him? Uh, it's more it's more a consistency in the footwork so you can play on time within the parameters of the progressions of the, of the passing game. Um, Guys that all the really, really great quarterbacks all play with a great base and they're able to take, you know, really short first step and the ball comes out. Um, so you tie you tie that those mechanical things in with an already a really natural quick release that Will has. I think um, it's only going to help him. But a lot of it's more the discipline and the footwork um, leading into the base at the top of the drop uh, where he can where he can really, I think, generate even more power than he's already got. And it helps him play more on time within the system framework. So uh, that part's been he's incredibly coachable. So that part's been fun to watch. How do you go about incorporating that into, like, you know, his group QB motion that he works with, you know, his mm -hmm. personal coaches? And how are you guys in communication? You relay that to them that you want him to work on that? Yeah, there's a back and forth. We haven't had that yet. Uh, and this is more this whole part was just us getting to know Will and, and seeing where we could improve him. Um, I've always been uh, loosely in contact with the guys that they work with just so they understand what what we coach and how we coach it, because sometimes they do differ. Um, but it's always good to, to have 
uh, open line of communication because every quarterback has people they go see in the offseason and they should. It's beneficial. Uh, we can't coach them all year long. Um, and so to have guys that can be a, a swing coach, if you will, for their mechanics um, is beneficial. So we just make sure we're on the same page with what we're teaching. And uh, if there's something that we don't dis dis we disagree on, you can have a conversation on where and why. And ultimately, we pay them. So uh, that's the that's usually where it lands is uh, we have the final say. But I'm always interested in working with guys that, that have people outside the building they see. It's always good business to be on the same page. In the interview you did with Albert Breer, you were talking about scouting Will when you took the job, mm -hmm. and it was like seeing things where the talent was there, maybe the decision-making just needed. Like, I can coach that up because it's a mental thing. What are you guys doing? What's it look like? Is it is it watching a ton of tape and going through situational things to just to have him as, as well-versed mentally as possible? Is it things you're doing on the practice field? What, what does that look like when you're trying to coach up good decision making? You start with this with what you're asking him on, on a per play basis. You know, what is the what does this progression ask? What is he supposed to do with his footwork? Where is his eyes supposed to be? Um, you teach we're teaching the system first. And then as you get into situations like today being a third down day, you get the chance to look back and say, uh, well, hey, this was a third and four decision, you know, did could you have made a different one? Could the ball gotten out quicker? We don't need to hold on to it in this particular instance. So there's a lot of coaching of the situations that go within teaching of the system. And so uh, we'll, where we're at in our process now is more about teaching the system and what's expected. Um, and then you add the situational layers as you get more comfortable uh, with the install. So we're about done with the installation part of, of the offense. And um, now it becomes more of a memory and recall and, and starting to pair a lot more things together. So it's coming together at this point. And then by training camp, uh, we should be ready to roll and guys should know what to do and how to do it. Brian, do you walk a fine line as a first year head coach between, you know, knowing what the potential of your offense could be and staying in the moment and just coaching up the players and making sure they're learning as they go? Yeah, you, you can get excited about uh, the players that we have, which I am excited about. Um, my focus doesn't veer too far from about the hour in front of me most of the time. Um, we try to make sure that that our players feel the same way. There's potential doesn't really mean much. Um, you still got to go prove it. You got to earn it. And and I think our guys are up to that task. But um, I don't spend too much time thinking about much other than, than what, what can we do better tomorrow than we did today. Um, I think that's a pretty safe space to live in for me. Uh, and that kind of goes with the whole part of the job, everything uh, around it. So uh, I'm aware that, that we have a chance to, to be a good offense. I believe in that. Um, but I also don't get too far ahead of myself. We've got a lot of work to do uh, between now and September and, and a lot of things we got to get better at. So um, that's probably the best way to say it. I know you said that you were focused on today, but there's been a proposal to potentially eliminate OTAs. Mm -hmm. How do you as a coach feel about that? I'll, I'll probably give an opinion if it's a little more imminent than it is currently. Um, you know, right now, if that, that changes next year, we, we can have those conversations. I, I know that the there's things about that process that make a lot of sense physiologically with how you ramp up in the training camp. Um, so I, I understand where they're coming from, um, and I get the I get the, the desire to kind of push things more towards training camp and less of taking a big break in between. Um, I personally very much enjoy that break. Uh, I need it this year. Uh, so thankfully, it's not going away this year for me. But um, I, I get it. I understand what they're looking for, and, and there's there's probably a place for that conversation. So as it gets closer and there's a more legitimate proposal that we get thrown out there, then then we'll see where it's at. But I uh, everything that we thought he would be. You know, that's the it's always uh, exciting when you sign a guy in free agency and, and you hope. Um, but you don't always know. You just you go by what you hear and what you see, and um, it's always good when the guy gets in the building and you see he's everything that you would expect him to be. Uh, he's a great pro. He's a phenomenal person to be around. Um, he's incredibly talented. Uh, you see his speed and his burst when you watch him on the field. Um, I think he's really going to help us, and uh, he's a pro's pro. He prepares. Uh, he works hard. He loves playing football, and, and those are the things you hope for when you sign free agents, and he's lived up to every one of those things for us so far, and again, a lot of work to go, but I've been really, really happy with him. As you begin to kind of look towards training camp, the guardian cap, what are your thoughts on that? You know, the, we had a whole presentation at the at the owners' meetings and, uh, with all the, all the data behind it. Um, I think it's I think they're great personally. Um, there's no reason not to wear it in practice. Uh, that's that's where a lot of those kind of overall steady impacts come from those guys up front over days and time. Um, there's just a lot of impact, and, and I think it does protect them from that. 
Uh, minus, I'm all for things that keep players on the field as, as long as possible. And the other kind of unintended benefit is I know you guys watch when you, when you start actually rushing and pads around, well, that pocket gets a little bit muddy sometimes, even though you want guys to stay away from the quarterback. I've seen multiple times now where uh, a quarterback hits the top of a helmet and it's not, it's not whatever those things are made of, metal for <laughs> that's not what they're made of. But that impact on the helmet is much less because it's padded. And so I've seen a couple of, of saves from those guardian caps for that reason. So um, I'm all for them. If guys want to wear them in a game, that's their decision. Um, I'm all for whatever protects players and keeps them on the field longer. Latham in just the past few weeks and anything that surprises you about him just even how he carries himself out there just as a pro yeah he doesn't carry himself like a rookie which is always a good thing um he, he's a he's very intentional about his work um he works really hard uh, he he spends a lot of time on this I think he understands which not all rookies understand that it is a job um and there's an expectation especially when you're drafted where you're where he was drafted that um you got to come perform, and I think that he's he's aware of that. Not everybody always is, and uh, he's got some maturity to him. But he also has a um, a youthful a youthful wonder that's kind of fun to be around. He's everything's new to him, you know. There's just a lot, and he's and he just loves playing football. Um, and so there's this kind of enthusiasm that he carries with him around the field that um, I think is fantastic. And he's getting better with the techniques, you know. I think it's going to be really fun to see where we where he ends up between now and the next couple of weeks. And then when training camp starts, when the pads come on, that's uh, we're going to find out a whole lot about a lot of people when when training camp starts. So um, I think he's he's making the right progress. But I think as you guys talk to him too, you enjoy his personality. He's he's made of the right stuff, and he works really hard. So uh, those two things are are a good start for him. Outside corners, invite McCreary <coughs> to push it maybe further than he's pushed it before. And yeah. how much further do you think he can go? Um, I think there's. I think we have a lot of room for improvement across the board on defense, and and I think we have a scheme um, that's in place now that ends up being uh, aggressive minded. Um, doesn't necessarily mean aggressive and we're going to blitz all the time, but there, there's an aspect of challenging people. And I think that we have two corners that are really, really good at that. That's part of what makes them good corners. Um, and that hopefully permeates to the rest of the secondary, Roger included, uh, where you get a chance to, to play with a more aggressive style. And th there's a there's a huge need for guys to play that nickel spot in the NFL, the way the teams are. Um, you know, you're playing 60%, sometimes more of your snaps in your nickel defense, and he's involved in the run fit. Uh, which Roger is really tough and, and gritty when it comes to those things. So having those guys out there that sort of let him know that this is – you can play this way and be successful um, is, is encouraging. So I'm excited to see what that brings for him. Um, of Spears and Pollard, how do you see their skills complementing each other, maybe their personalities as well? Yeah, they are definitely different personalities. Um, you know, Tony's a lot quieter. Tajay's got a lot more natural energy. Um, but they both practice really hard, which is great. Uh, but those guys have, you know, I can't wait to start playing around and using them in different different ways because um, they both do things differently, but they have they're unique. That Tony's got great acceleration and great explosiveness with the ball in his hands. Tajay does too. Tajay's got uh, a little really great short area quickness. So anytime we can find ways to match those guys up in the passing game on, on linebackers is a huge benefit for us. They're hard to cover. Um, they can run routes like receivers, which is unique. Um, I've not seen guys like them very often, and we have two of them. Uh, they can line up out wide and run a, a route tree like a receiver can, and that's and they catch naturally, which is exciting. Um, I'm fired up to see how they run with the ball in our scheme. You know, we again with no pads on, it's hard to really tell, but um, I'm excited about the style that we can run with. We can do a lot of different things. We can run from the gun. We can run on the perimeter because they got enough speed, um, and they're both tough enough and most and physical enough to run in between the tackles. And so, uh, again, they, I've said it before, but I'm I'm really excited about what those guys can bring to our offense. Next week of a mini camp, that you can't maybe do an OTA. I guess you more time one time. Yeah, I mean, truthfully, it's going to be about the same as an OTA day for us. Um, we sort of keep the same schedule. Uh, we get a little bit more time, a little more freedom. But for the most part, it'll be a pretty similar day uh, for consistency's sake for the players. Um, same mindset. You know, we're still very much in teach mode. Um, we're starting to compete a little bit more, as you're seeing with the seven on sevens. Um, but for us, it's it's still we sort of keep the same routine. The the only thing that changes is that everybody has to be here. That's really the difference is that it's mandatory. But other than that, the, the day and the practice schedule and all that will be pretty consistent to what we've done so far.
Yeah. One more time. What, what did you guys see in Mason Rudolph the last yeah. four or five games of last year that intrigued you enough to? to yeah, I've been I've had a chance to, to you know to play against Mason a few times now. Um, he's been in Pittsburgh for most of the time. I was in Cincinnati, so very familiar divisional opponent. Um, Mason, when he's had a chance to play, has played pretty well. And, you know, he was never the, the full-time starter, but uh, you see his, his record as a starter. Um, he did a really nice job doing what they needed him to do uh, when he played. And that's that's the name of the game if, if you're a backup quarterback to be ready to play and when your moment comes to perform well enough to help your team win. And you play for four, five, six games, you, you, you're expected to go out and play well enough to win those. And um, I think he's proven that over his career that when he's had opportunities, um, he's played well. He's big, he's strong, he throws the ball well, he's accurate. Um, and he's got the playing experience to, to back it up. And so we were, we were really intrigued and excited about being able to add him. What are some of the things that a big-bodied center like Cushenberry can bring to the table as opposed to the more athletic guys that some teams use? Good question. Um, I'm a big believer in the firmness of the pocket. And so when you have, when you have big, strong people inside, that pocket doesn't get pushed. Um, you can you can manage edge rushers. You can help on edge rushers. Um, if the middle of your pocket gets pushed, there's not a lot of places for the quarterback to go. And so I've always believed in a firmness of the interior of the pocket. Strong players tend to keep it that way. Um, so there's a place for the quarterback to move and to run and to step up uh, when needed. So that's the first part, and pass pro is a huge benefit. Um, these guys inside on the other side of defense keep getting bigger and better and stronger and faster every year, it feels like. Um, and so you want people that can match that, and Lloyd can do all those things. The secondary part of it is in the run game is now your, your double teams and your your gap schemes and your down blocks. And uh, and for Lloyd, he can pull too. End up being a lot more stout and physical uh, when you got the size behind it. So uh, I think you, you've, you've noticed that we like big people. Um, that's probably not going to change and, and bigger and stronger. Um, you don't generally want to sacrifice movement skills, but sometimes when you get a little bit extra strength and a little bit less movement, you can manage that. So, um, but I would say that those two things are, are really huge for having a big person in the middle of your offensive line. Thanks, guys. Chance to come here uh, with Callahan, somebody you know. Uh, that may be a little and a, a position of need, kind of the perfect fit all the way around for you coming to Tennessee. Oh, most definitely. You know, it's been a true blessing to have you know a sense of comfortability here with uh, Coach Cali. Coach Jackson, uh, safeties coach, Colt came from the Bengals. I played with Bloom when I was on the Cowboys. Um, I have the offensive coordinator, went to Colorado. So it's just like everything was perfect for me. So I'm, I'm really comfortable and excited to get after it for those guys. I don't think we've talked to you since uh, Snead arrived too. What was that news like, like for you and how excited are you about you know, pairing up with him? Oh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. You know, uh, once I heard the news, I kind of had heard some whispers. You know, you always hear whispers and stuff. But uh, when the news got confirmed, you know, I was really excited. We actually have the same uh, physical trainer out there in Dallas. So, um, you know, I got to meet him before we even got out here after he signed. Um, and yeah, now he's just a really great addition. You know, just his temperament already. I could tell he's very, you know, calm under pressure. Um, I could tell he's competitive. He's asking questions. And I know when he gets out there, the defense is going to feel it for sure. That he brings in and he brings when you look at Denard Wilson, you look at Steve Jackson, Chris Harris, like it's just continuously that's the theme. How critical is it for you to make sure that you exemplify that each day out there on that? Oh no, I think it's very important. Number one thing, you know, it starts with Coach Wilson right now. You know, just setting the the, the a new defense, you know, setting the standard. Um, it's everybody's matching each other's intensity. You know, right now, you know, he's the one who's really setting the tone in the meeting room. Then we gotta come out here and match his intensity. At some point, us players, when we get comfortable with the system, we're going to be the ones setting the tone and the intensity, and the team going to have to match us. So we're still on that path, and there's just a long road to be. But um, everybody has that same vision in mind, you know, that aggressiveness. But we just got to get there. But we far away right now, but we're going to get there. How do you look at you that, and, and the Jerry's? Like you guys, like you like to have those conversations with the receivers at the line. What is it? Like, what's the mindset? How do you develop such a comfort to, you know, challenge guys that have the line of scrimmage? Like I mean, it's more so a thing of just game gamesmanship. You know, we all been there. You know, you have a guy who um, is being talked about as one of the top guys, and you want to be in that conversation. You want to compete. You want to, you know, show your teammates what you can do. Um, so you're gonna go out there and compete. You know, it's all gamesmanship, but it's not like every play. Me personally, I'm talking. It's just if really if they talk to me, that's when I talk. But uh, the aggression is is 
That, that, that's regardless. So that aggressive style of defense, is that kind of what you get when you have a guy with a defensive back pedigree running the defense? Honestly, I don't know. We got to ask Coach Wilson about his childhood or upbringing or something because he, I feel like he probably been that way out the womb, for real. For real. He, he, he got that. I'm not going to lie. Um, but again, it's all about matching intensity. This is a physical game. This is a, an aggressive game. You know, there's no other way for it to be played. And, you know, he exemplifies that in every which way. And like I said, we got to match his intensity. At some point, we're going to have to take that, his tone, his attitude to the field and uh, do it ourselves. We don't got pads on or nothing right now, but we can run to the ball. We can show effort. We can have great attitude. You know, start to have great uh, habits that'll form into that, you know, style of play that we want to be. Mark, you said that you guys don't leave the field until stuff is corrected. That that's not always been the case where, where he's played and for coaches he's played with. How, how important do you find that? that and do you find that to be the case and how important is that? I mean, it's all about the details at the end of the day. Um, I will say just in terms of the defensive backs, you know, we're staying out here on the field after practices, working on certain techniques and stuff. I'm um, just trying to be better. And I could tell that, you know, even though this group is young, you know, everybody really wants to wants to be great, you know, and uh, you don't always get that on a, on a football team. And I've I've played on a team that went to the Super Bowl. I played on a team that went to playoffs. But, you know, that is like the foundation, foundational steps of a great secondary, number one, and a great defense is how important are the details to us, to each other? Are we going to the locker room talking about it? Or as soon as we're off the field, we're just talking about some other stuff. But, uh, you know, if you walk into the locker room, you'll see people on their iPads talking about plays, waiting for the, the, the practice to get uploaded so they could talk about it. Or maybe they just don't want to get yelled at by Coach Wilson, so they want to get ahead of it. But either way, you know, people are focused really on the details. Them better, flip it the other way. How how good is this receiving core, and, and how sh much should they stress you guys in practices? Oh no, they're really good. Um, you know, I, I know those guys have all been proven in the NFL. Um, you know, even you know the two guys that aren't starting right now. You know. Uh, you know, they're really good. And, you know, all the way down to the uh, bottom of the roster, you know, really uh, Coach Callahan's system is very offensive friendly, very receiver friendly anyway. So, you know, that's a system that we'll be facing a lot during the year. And, you know, having the pieces like we have going against them each day is only going to make us better. You might have to try to keep it PG, but do you have a favorite Denard story so far? <laughs> So when he when he explains when when Coach Wilson explains like a, a call or a defense, he'll be like, "It can't be that simple." You're like, "It can't be that simple," and like, it just caught on. Like he always says that, like you know, it could be any coverage. So it's just at the end, it can't be that simple. And then he'll look at you crazy. So yeah, that's kind of something I've noticed. What have you seen with Roger McCreary as far as his development as a mm -hmm. young boy? Man, that guy moves like he's been in the league for 10 years. You know, he he, he has great professionalism, um, obviously great athleticism. We know all the stuff on the field, but off the field, I just see a guy who is really focused and who wants to be really great. Um, you know, and also it matters to him, you know, just like I said with everybody in the secondary, but a lot so uh, Roger, you know, he, he is the guy that's been here, I think, had the most reps probably in the secondary currently as a, as a corner nickel. Um, so he's earned that right, and uh, he, he's definitely stepped into a leadership role. So what, is it? Sorry, go ahead. Man, what is that like? I mean, because he's still young in the game. You guys have more years, but he has more years here. Yeah, I mean, obviously he knows how things go. How things go. Number one in this division, in the AFC South, and then uh, also just playing in Tennessee, you know, there's things that I, I couldn't I couldn't tell people, you know, but he can tell us. So um, he's definitely one of the leaders on, in the secondary and one of the leaders in the corner cornerback group and on this team. So we'll definitely be uh, listening to him anytime he has something to say. Going back to that scheme, Chito, how, how easy is it to learn and pick up? I know he says tongue in cheek, it can't be that simple, but how easy is it to pick up for you guys? It's not simple in a sense, but it is simple once he breaks it down, I would say. Um, you know, obviously I've played in the league for some for some years now, so I could kind of hear a terminology, but know, okay, that, that's what I used to play here, but we just called it this. Okay, we may have a little intricacy right here that, that changes, but, you know, it's still this coverage, you know, stuff like that. Maybe a younger player don't have that reference point. So the way he breaks it down, it becomes simple, you know what I'm saying? So I would say really it goes against to the teachers on, on, on our, on our uh, defensive staff, the corners coach, safeties coach, backers coaches, and uh, D-line coach, everybody like that, you know, they've been doing a great job just breaking it down. Did you compete in a chess tournament recently? Yeah. How would that end up going? Um, see, I thought it was just a fun thing. You know, the first year I played, I got first. I won it. Uh, second year, I got second. This year, people were talking about they were training with grandmasters, doing this. I'm like, bro, 
I thought we were just having fun. Like he's like, oh, thank you, Jim Canty. So I end up getting fourth place. Um, but now I know people are taking it that serious. So I'll, I'll be I'll be in my bag next year for sure. What was uh, I competed against Justin Reed in the first round. He ended up winning it. I beat him once. He beat me once, and then he beat me again. So then he advanced, and then I ended up losing to Matt Collins. And then yeah, that's how I got fourth place. NFL sponsored chess tourney, or, or how, who put it on? It's Chess.com that put it on. Um, Daniel Ranch and uh, a lot of those guys over there I know. You know, I'm an avid chess player. I have fun with it. Um, and you know we had guys like Michael Vick, Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald is always mad when he when he sees me in the tournament because I knock him out every year. But uh, yeah, it's, it's good to like meet you know some of the people across the NFL that love chess. Quentin Nelson was in there too. So yeah, it was just a really really, really fun time. Who's your biggest competition in this locker room? Competition? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I haven't really. Yeah, Caleb Farley is I guess plays, and I played him, I beat him, but he's 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 good. Oh, for sure, for sure. Um, chess is a, a it's a game where you have to recognize positions. You know, like okay, I've been in this position before. Um, how was I attacked? Or maybe I made the wrong move before. And now, you know, now that I've seen this position, I kind of know the right move to make. And football is the same thing, like with pattern recognition. You, you may see a formation, you know, two by two, but you know this receiver's cut a little bit, and that's that, that's the little change that you see. And now you recognize, okay, what route did we get earlier in the game? And you're able to you know, attack it. So I think Chess just with my mind has helped me diagnose things better. Roger said you've also been running the ping pong table in there. So. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but there's competition in there for sure, for sure. Uh, Nick Westbrook is really good. Um, forgot the, one, one of the linebackers. And then uh, I think the kicker is really good too. Yeah, Tyler Boyd is really good as well. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna put nobody out like that. <laughs> Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I have one that like it, I like put it on my wall, like I nailed it into my wall, and she uses that. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Oh yeah. The skill position players that have been brought in for this offense, how, is it, how exciting is this offense potentially and, and your role in it as well? Yeah, it's very exciting when you uh, see the stuff we're bringing in. It feels like we're going to, you know, be relying a lot on the pass. And, you know, that's obviously a, a big part of my game too. So I'm very excited for that. I'm very excited to, you know, you know, have those guys on the outside and then, you know, get a lot of the attention and then, you know, make plays on the inside. You like the idea of, I guess, a fresh start coming. It seems like the first two years have been, you know, some ups and downs as well. Yeah, fresh start is always good, especially, you know, when you, you're coming off of, you know, losing a lot. So a fresh start is always good. Uh, the buildings, the vibes are, you know, immaculate right now. You know, they're great. So we just want to keep building on that. And just uh, the future is exciting for us right now. Some turnover in there as well. What's that? How's it been for that group? Oh, yeah, it's really good, you know. You know, leading the tight end room, me and Josh. And then we got Nick coming in, you know, vet, nine-year vet. Um, it's been very good. Got a lot of young guys too. Everybody's just willing to work and willing to help each other. And I really like our group this year. I think we have a lot. We all complement a lot of each other's skill sets. <clears throat> What's the sense of maybe what this offense will offer for tight ends that, that maybe you didn't see in the first couple years without getting overly specific or anything? Uh, I just think more down the field attack and stuff. I would say you know just you know using our speed, you know, get those balls down the field. A lot of stuff was like shorter stuff for us, you know, in the past, but I think we're going to be able to open up a lot more things. <clears throat> Chick, what, what have you seen with Will this year and kind of the carryover from last year? Now he is the starter. Right. Yeah, well, Will is just like his mindset is every day he's just locked in. Like you can see, you can see it in him, everything he does, man. He just, he really wants to be great. And it really makes you want to follow him. And it really, I really appreciate the way he just comes in every day. And he just, he always wants to be great. You can just see it in him that like he really, you know, is very serious about this. He's very serious about being the starting quarterback for our team and very serious about leading us and, you know, becoming a, a great player. So, yeah. You mentioned the vibes are immaculate. <laughs> what, 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 where can you tell that? Where does that maybe show up in the, on the practice field or maybe in the locker room? Yeah, I mean, I feel like guys are just more, more relaxed, you know, now. With our building, I feel like guys come in and they're not as tense, not as as stressed out, and it just you know allow people to be a lot more free, a lot more free in the locker room. I mean, we always were free in the locker room, but it's a lot more free on the field. I think we're going to see a lot of that this year. Do you have an example of that freedom? Just like how is that manifesting itself? Example of it? Um, I mean, it just 
you know, coming in and being, I feel like just coming in and being yourself, not feeling like you need to, you know, minimize yourself, what you're doing, just coming in and fully being you. What do you attribute that more relaxed environment or atmosphere to? Uh, it's just the different different cultures right now. We're we're seeing a different a new culture, um, the way we do things. You know, it's a lot more on us on on, on the players. You know, to get going. So I, I feel like that's having us having ownership of that has been a big thing to help us. You know, be a lot more free. <clears throat> Anything change with you as far as how you're prepared for for OKs, putting on more weight, changing your diet, doing anything different than you've done. I don't think I've really done much different, but for me, it's really, I was trying to, I wanted to change like the way my body moved this off season. So I did, a, I was doing a lot of stuff like that in Florida. I felt like uh, I maximized the potential I had of my body. And I had, if I wanted to, you know, get better, I had to change the structure of how I move and stuff. So I did a lot of that work in Florida, just, you know, a lot of stability work, getting better at getting in and out of cuts and getting open. How about the specific trainer that you hired to help you with that? Mm -hmm. Can you tell a big difference? Oh, big difference. And just in the way, just I mean, even the way I feel, man, like my body, like I just feel a lot better when I move, you know, after a long day of moving, I don't feel as sore because it's moving properly. So in your position last year, you guys were able to wear the guardian caps. And yeah. as you look back on that, <clears throat> Did you feel like that was a hindrance at all? Or what were your thoughts on it? It was definitely happened? a hindrance because we couldn't get any good pictures. <laughs> but, um, nah, uh, I feel like they're, they're okay. I don't think they were too much of a problem. As you look at, I believe it was like 23% reduction in concussions last year during practice. Mm -hmm. So they saw that, and now they're saying, hey, positions could wear that in games now. That's something there, won't be a single, there won't be a single NFL player wearing those in games. There won't <laughs> yeah. be. Because it just looks ugly. Yeah, or exactly, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly. That's the only reason. <laughs>